Let's get started. After installing Express, we can navigate to Programs, FICO, Express. We'll find all the tools here. Let's start with the online documentation. It includes a complete set of documents and examples for all of the Express tools. First, software installation guides for Express as well as Express Insight. We have introductory materials, especially for evaluators, for advanced operations research users, getting started manuals, the Moselle language reference guide, MIP formulations guide, user guides for Moselle Express Insight solution development, complete reference manuals for the Express Optimizer, Moselle, Insight, Nonlinear, the Object-Oriented Builder Component Library, and the Express Kalis Constraint Programming Tool. Finally, we include a number of advanced materials such as mathematical modeling in the context of parallel distributed computing, how to interact with Amazon EC2, robust optimization, and aspects related to FICO optimization in the cloud. This documentation is always available when Express is installed. Next, let's take a look at the Express IVE development environment and the Express Mozilla language. We're going to start by opening one of the examples. In the menu wi wizards, we have many options. Let's choose complete models. And then we're going to pick the example production planning. We'll open this model in the editor. And the model will appear in the main screen of Express IVE. This is the area where we can edit the model, the mathematical formulation, and any other routines that we might use in our algorithm. For now, I'm going to run the model we'll notice several areas are activated on the screen. On the left, we have the Model Explorer, which explores the model by its contents, parameters, subroutines, user-defined types, and of course, the most important elements, decision variables, and constraints. You can explore these elements in an alphabet, uh, al alphabetically ordered list as well. You can double click on the various entities in the list. You can sort, you can copy to Excel, and you can also search in a text form. In the main model editor, um, you get the benefits of syntax highlighting. You get copious tool tips to show uh, what each entity under the mouse cursor is, what it represents, how large it is, and some of the values that it contains. In this particular model, we're, we're, we're solving a multi-period production planning and um, ingredient planning uh, problem. So it makes use of several data entities, such as range of products, range of factories, range of raw materials, and time periods. We have various auxiliary arrays, such as um, unit selling price, unit cost, etc. We have the routines that define the mathematical model. In this case, our objective is made up of several components. Product stock balance constraints, material stock balance constraints, capacity limits, etc. And then after we call the optimizer, we can print the solution to the screen as well. There's quite a bit going on on the right hand side of the screen. In addition to the outputs from the optimizer, as a solution developer, as a model developer, you can begin to learn more about your mathematical model by clicking on the various display screens that are automatically updated for every model you build. So first you have the statistics. How big the matrix is, in this case, we have a MIP problem with uh, 64 rows or constraints, 106 columns, variables, etc. 
Then we have a detailed matrix view. There are several useful individual sub views in the matrix view. First, we get a summary or a sketch view of the matrix. This outlines the objective and which decision variables are used in the objective. And it outlines all the major constraints or constraint types within the mathematical model. We have eight capacity constraints and all of them are less than or equal to, eight demand constraints, 16 production balance constraint, 24 constraints for ingredients, and then um, on and on for other types of constraints and variables. This offers a quick uh, debugging perspective into what's going on in the model. You can see which columns belong to each constraints and generally this will give you an idea if the data was read in correctly or or and if the model was modeled correctly. Next you have a column view. The column view takes a detailed perspective of every individual column in the matrix. We have 16 make variables all with the indices as defined in the mathematical model. We can see the how many rows this variable participates in, the lower bound and upper bound, the actual solution value, the reduced cost, and the type of variable, whether it's continuous, integer, partial, integer, semi-continuous, etc. We can easily scroll all of these columns. For each individual column, if we click on the column name, we get to see which constraints the column actually belongs to and with which coefficients. Again, this offers a quick way of um, debugging, of understanding how variables, how columns are used within the matrix. The row view offers a similar perspective for our constraints. So in this case, for each constraint, we see its, its type, the row number in the matrix, the name of the constraint, how many columns or how many variables does it contain, the right hand side, the activity value, the slack, and dual values, if available. And again, we can see all the constraints and, and the variables in the problem in this view. You might wonder, does this work if we have several million rows or several million columns? Uh, yes, it will work just as well. IVE will be able to visualize uh, a similar number and size of constraints for large problems as it can for small problems. Again, we can transparently see what each constraint is and what how the variables uh, and their coefficients participate in that constraint. If I click on new constraints, the, the view screen will update automatically. Another perspective is a graphical visualization of the matrix. Mainly for academic purposes, this offers uh, a glimpse into what the matrix actually looks like uh, in, in its sparse format that gets sent to the optimizer. So in this case, we can see positive coefficients, negative coefficients, and their uh, approximate location in the matrix. Finally, you get to see a scaling perspective that tells us how well uh, the matrix is scaled uh, in terms of its, its coefficient having reasonably close ranges to each other. We can look at the matrix coefficients. We can include right-hand sides or exclude them, objective coefficients, and so on and so forth. So this perspective will tell us if, if the matrix is generally well scaled or not. For slightly harder problems where, where we can see the, um, where, where it takes longer to solve the problem, we also get a graphical visualization of the search process. Let's take a look at, uh, at an example of such a problem. So I'm going to go back to my wizard, complete models, and let's pick a lot sizing problem. I'm going to open this model, compile, and run it. And so now um, we see an, um, a visualization is created as part of running this model 
we're going to skip this for now and go back to express IVE so what we see here is a graphical representation of the MIP search we can see each green square is a solution that was found we can see when the solution what was found and what the optimality optimality gap was at that time we also get a perspective of the branch and bound search so the branch and bound search again is a scalable perspective of how the nodes are explored by the express optimizer and we get to see in further detail which nodes are are uh, cut off the yellow nodes which nodes are infeasible the red nodes and which nodes have an integer solution in this case our green node here is an integer solution furthermore when we click on these nodes we can actually see the entire path of how that solution was found what were the branching variable selections along the way and what values those variables had uh, at that at those respective nodes in the tree the coloring of the tree represents um, a view of how each processor core or each thread um, is assigned to work on that particular node or that particular branch so in this case we see a nice distribution of the processing of nodes um, across the various threads and CPU cores on my laptop okay so we've seen some of the basic features in Express IV let's take a let's take a look at some features that make it easier for you as a as a mathematical modeler um, to uh, debug build and further understand your mathematical model especially as it grows in size and complexity so there are some features such as um, visualize the contents of every entity whether it's a, a large array or a simple parameter you can visualize any entity in your model either in the simple screen tooltips that appear when I hover the mouse or by right clicking and viewing the values further you can actually search for the various entities in your model I can click right click and say find all occurrences of demand what we see here is are all, are all the lines where this demand array is being used demand it's used in the um, in the creation of constraints satisfy total demand constraint of course and then finally when we print the final solution values associated with those demand locations extremely easy to navigate the optimization model based on um, searching for elements and finding them where they're actually used in the model or for input purposes or for output purposes next I'm going to talk about the debugging capabilities available to you as the mathematical modeler so first I'm going to click on the profile button the profile button again I'm going to close the visualization the profile button runs the model in a special execution mode where it actually measures the amount of time spent on each line and then it sorts uh, the, the lines in reverse order of execution time so it takes us 371 milliseconds to execute the minimize routine it takes us about 303 milliseconds uh, for this cut generation function where we're not going to get into a lot of detail it takes 69 milliseconds to execute this routine 275,000 times and so on and so forth so this offers a, a quick perspective of uh, where time is consumed in creating the model assembling the data and then executing the optimization in addition to profiling we also have access to advanced debugging features so at its simplest the debugging capability 
gives you both soft breakpoints as well as hard breakpoints. Let's first run our model using soft breakpoints where we output the line number, the line content, and we expand the identifiers within the line. Okay, so I'm going to, to start executing the model. And we're going to get extremely verbose output in our debug view. Again, again we get the visualization. Going back to Express IV, and we see a complete log of every statement in the model being executed and um, values being displayed. So the value algorithm equals six, it starts with the initial value zero, and then it gets assigned a value six. Cut depth starts with zero, it gets assi assigned a value 10, and so on and so forth. Then, within each line in the Moselle model, we get to see the size of each element, the current value of each it iterator uh, across the arrays and the indexing sets. We can see the sizes of each set and the individual value of each iterator. So we have P equals two, S equals five, T equals five, followed by P equals two, S equals five, T equals six and seven and eight and at every point in the execution we have a chance to actually see these values and then after the optimizer executes we can see the same for the output screens this offers um, a way to go back in time and essentially understand the complete set of instructions the complete set of actions that Moselle takes in order to define the model, to call the optimizer, and then to display or output the results. In addition to the runtime debugger, you have access to other convenience capabilities, such as the wizards I mentioned before, how to define a model, select its type, how to set up parameters, how to perform data input depending on the type and shape of your data structures, how to define variables of various types, how to define the objectives and select the solution algorithm, constraints, results in tuning, how to select various control parameters, how to perform text output, user graphing, it outlines the various programming features, loops, conditional statements, if, then, else, case statements, how to declare procedures and subroutines, how to perform mo more common debugging tasks, and finally, the complete models that we've seen before. In addition to these um, highly documented models, you also have access to the set of examples in the Express distribution. These are typically located in C, ExpressMP, Examples, Moselle, and there are numerous folders here, each folder containing a set of models that cover topics from embedding with Excel, performing advanced graphing functions, um, performing advanced mathematical modeling tasks, um, examples related to the Moselle documentation, nonlinear examples, integration with R, programming tasks, and so on and so forth. All of these examples are available in the Express Moselle distribution.